Hi everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to loosely paint a farming scene. Now I'm adding in some cobalt blue, very light cobalt blue to the top and to that mix a bit of darker cobalt blue mixed in with a bit of grey. But for the most part here, I'm just trying to get rid of the white of the paper by using a very light wash of blue while dropping in some of the darker colours. And this is going to create just some holes in the clouds to indicate some sky. And decided I want to put in a pretty large cloud running in from the left hand side. So I've mixed up a bit of grey here on the side. And just with my three primaries, making sure it's thick enough. And just in very random patterns, adding in the clouds. Making sure they're smaller at the bottom as well. I don't want to overdo it, but really important to make sure that the colour you drop in is a lot darker. Now while the wash is still wet, I'm adding in some distant mountains and I'm just letting that melt into the sky. And same goes with the green here. And I'm bringing that wash of green completely down the page trying to make sure that it's lighter at the back and darker at the front. Also got this page tilted on a slight angle which helps the paint to run down. And you notice that once I paint a certain area I really go back and touch it up again in that same wash unless I'm adding in some darker paint or I want to create some textures. Now I'm adding in the foreground here with a bit of yellow ochre and some burnt sienna as well. While the paper's wet, you've still got this opportunity to add in just bits of water and some darker paint to influence the texture and make things a bit more interesting. Otherwise it just dries completely flat and tends to look a bit boring at times. If you look at the reference picture on the top right hand corner, notice I'm just following it very loosely and just generally I've changed around a few things in terms of the sky. I've made that more of an emphasis. I wanted to add in some clouds and I'm planning to do some shadows coming over later. So don't be too bogged down by the reference picture and I guess um, restricted by it. I've mixed up some darker paint now, it's a darker green and I'm doing those trees at the back just being careful to leave in those mountains it's very important with the mountains and them merging into the sky it's going to help create that feeling of depth in the painting in this kind of loose landscape when you know you've got so much detail if you look at the reference picture you've got little trees that you can actually see um, separated out. You've got little houses in between branches and individual leaves in the foreground. If you think of it too much in that way, you're going to get bogged down in the details and it's going to get too messy to, to paint in this particular style. So I tend to just reduce things down and look at the main shapes. So I'll try to get the mountains and all the trees done in the back in one go. And I can go back, go back in later and indicate a bit more detail. Some things to consider are, is the shape light? Is it dark? Um, you know, is it bigger or is it smaller, essentially? And just using a brush to indicate those details. But I'm not really trying to make it obvious. Um, one of the things I've done here as well is with the trees, good trick that I've learned is when you put on the first layer just to get the general tree shape in if you add in some darker colors at the base at the same time while the tree's wet it will melt into the tree and it looks a bit better in terms of the shadow so i've done that with the trees on the left hand side but with the ones on the right hand side i've i've waited a little bit too long and so i've just added them in underneath
I've been adding, uh, playing around with the mountains in the back as well. And I tend to use my finger to smudge certain areas as well, just to encourage it to blend in and just make it look a bit more natural. In the foreground, I've added a glaze of, uh, I think it's just clean water to begin with actually, and I've gone over now and added a bit more paint into that mix, some darker paint. I've got some burnt sienna, I've got some blues, and I'm scratching out some detail blades of grass, plant stalks at the front. And that's just going to read more as uh, the foreground area. So almost looking over on this scene from a vantage point, from an upper vantage point. And the house down the bottom, I've left it white in the initial wash, and that actually helps a lot when you get up to this point. But if you've accidentally gone over it, or you know, for whatever reason, you can still go over with a bit of gouache later on. And I'm trying to add in the shadows now to a lot of these trees and houses. making sure they're all going in the right direction. Touching up a few other areas and now just giving it a dry again. Scratched out a bit more paint. And really at this point I'm just looking for small areas here and there to touch up and tidy up. I've mixed up a bit of white gouache and I'm trying to just indicate the roofs of some of these houses in the distance. And some highlights here and there. just to make things a bit more interesting. Remember not to overdo it. What I'm doing now is I've mixed up a bit of purple and I'm gonna go in and glaze over in some areas beneath the clouds just to indicate the shadows from those clouds and I thought that would be quite a nice finishing touch especially to bring the foreground and the midground together a bit more and now adding, adding a few more finishing touches making it a bit more darker in the foreground To help bring it forward a bit more and I'm using some gouache here as well just a little bit of yellow gouache if you want to learn how to paint more landscapes check out this link on the bottom right you can also have a look at some of these general tips for beginners on the top right as well thanks for watching